Hey there, and welcome back to another segment from the Gamma 2018 trade show in Reno, Nevada. Uh, I'm really excited to be talking to Mark Spencer today uh, from Grand Gamers Guild about this game that was done in conjunction with uh, your company and also Burnt Island, I yep, believe. Yep, yep, yep. This is Endeavor Age of Sail, and the reason I'm really excited to talk about this um, and where it's going from here is because um, I personally back about two Kickstarters a year, and this was one of them. Uh, All this right. Year. Yeah, That's so, awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear kind of a general overview of what this game is about and where it's going now that its Kickstarter is funded. Sure, so from a story perspective, Endeavor Age of Sail is a story of the uh, approximately 300 year period of exploration known as the Age of Sail. Uh, players are gonna start out in Europe and the Mediterranean and then they're gonna move out to the other parts of the world. They're going to establish shipping lanes that would be covered with all of these different icons. And I think we should mention that this is a total prototype. Yeah, yeah. So yes, everything that you see here is just kind of just prototype uh, printed. There's like just various random bits for all the components at the yep, moment. Yep. It's like a mishmash of the old yeah. and the new and stuff like that. But if yeah. you go to the Kickstarter page, uh, you'll see that this thing uh, is overboard, no oh, pun yeah. intended. It got totally, <laughs> totally blinged out. Yes. Um, so you're establishing shipping routes, you are establishing colonies, um, and expanding your empire out into the world, gaining influence in the areas, building your engine, uh, going up the tracks, which is gonna enable you to do more and more things. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest change to the game from the original edition are these things called the exploits. Um, over the course of the campaign, there are 15 exploits that got unlocked, which embellish the story and all the historical connections. So there's a lot that we learned in our uh, history classes about Europe and the Mediterranean and, and going out into the world, but what about the connection between like Africa and the Caribbean or India and the Far East? So these things all um, take elements of history that you may or may not have learned. Mm -hmm. When those regions get unlocked, this becomes available to the people that have presence in those regions. So in the fifth, sixth, seventh rounds, it gives the folks who have invested in those areas and have presence a whole other way to play, a whole other way to gain uh, mechanisms in the game and a whole other way to gain end game points. Nice, so they're not quite like global events. They're more like scenarios that are gonna be unlocked for the people that have invested in going into those areas. Exactly, exactly. And so um, again, you only play with three that are randomly chosen. There are 15 in the box. And so it will sort of guide you as to where to inv uh, you know, invest yourself in the game, but, but you're not hamstrung. It's not as if you don't go into North America, you have no chance. Mm -hmm. It's just that if you do go into North America, this gives you a late game option to expand your play that maybe someone else doesn't have. Let's talk about expanding your play. It, it, do you start out like with one, one boat and a shipping company, and then you kind of build and, and go out? Or how do you kind of go and spread out into the world and, and conquer or, or explore and find more areas. Sure, so essentially everyone has presence in Europe and it's a little bit more abstracted than, 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 than a literal map and moving boats and, and such. Mm -hmm. So basically what you do, Every round you have an opportunity to build a building based on how much industry you have. The more industry you have, the better buildings you can build. Then, based on your culture, you will gain population in your harbor uh, from, your, from your, uh, your, your overall bank. Um, once you can pay your people who you've put to work in previous rounds, they'll also come back so you can use them again. And then you'll take those people over the course of the round and put them back on the buildings. You'll be able to ship further, you'll be able to um, establish more colonies, you'll be able to draw cards, which will then increase your engine further. And, and slowly over the course of seven rounds, you'll have your, have your empire. So yeah, he's really kind of building that empire through making a very efficient engine, not necessarily just making boats and sending them out and, and stuff like that. It's, Correct. It has much more of that. Yeah. yeah, engine building, worker placement, a little bit of resource management. All wrapped together in a nice little Exactly, and now, with a heck of a historical Oh, uh, yes. you know, uh, yeah. setting. And this is one of the player boards, correct? Yes, that yes. actually is, I mean, while, while not final quality, yeah. it is um, It is the player board. It is, it's larger than the original edition, has a player aid right on the That's side. Nice. Um, oh, and then of course, one of the other things worth mentioning is we have the four or five player side up here, but one of the uh, significant changes is that the board will be double-sided. The other side is for two and three players. Um, in the original game, there was a, a, a dummy player or a robot player that acted, uh, but you don't need that anymore. You That's really Final nice. Cut. Yeah, people, really people nice. are very excited about that, and so are we. That is, yeah. So uh, you got the nice player boards with the uh, you know all controlling all of your empire you're building, and you got the, the map, and then you got the neat scenarios that are un unlocking and everything else, and mm -hmm. all of the amazing components that were unlocked during the Kickstarter. Oh my gosh, it's yes. crazy. Yeah. So uh, timeline wise and um, availability and MSRP wise, what's kind of the plan from here going forward towards its release? Sure. So uh, we have every expectation to have a worldwide release at SN2018. Nice. So I mean everything is pretty much done. We have. Uh, you know, everything in motion, essentially. 
And uh, after that, it'll be uh, in your retail stores. Uh, Seventy dollar MSRP is what we're looking at. And yeah, you know, oh, and um, you know, like you said, the Kickstarter's ended, but the backer kit is open. So if you're intrigued by what you've seen here, um, you know, go to the. Uh, Post, post campaign pledge manager and support us there. Excellent. I was going to ask one thing. Um, is the normal retail release of this um, planned to have all of the component upgrades and things that were unlocked during the Kickstarter? Yes and no. Um, so the Kickstarter did have a special edition called the Commodore. Um, it has a number of significant enhancements, like this is going to be a double layered player board with recesses along the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to cubes, there's going to be sculpted markers that go along, a little pile of bricks and a little urn. Um, so there's quite a number of embellishments that were Kickstarter only. Okay. But honestly, one of the um, through lines of the campaign was we wanted to make sure that we kept the gameplay intact. There is absolutely nothing gameplay-wise that you will be missing if you didn't back the Kickstarter. That is really nice when the, you uh, keep that in mind when you're developing a game. Because oh, it's, there's nothing worse than getting the game after the Kickstarter and realizing, oh, I don't have that one add-on that changes the whole thing. So that's yep, yep, really yep, exactly. Nice. Cool. Excellent. Uh, well, was there anything else uh, that you wanted to mention about Endeavor? No, not at all. We're super excited. We're super proud. And, and we're super grateful to the backers. I mean, they were an amazing interactive group. They helped bring this to life um, and get it to the heights that it was at. So thank you, backers. It means a lot. Yeah, yeah. Endeavor was one of those uh, Kickstarters that really seemed to be one of this year's uh, early year uh, success stories. It was on one of those that kind of came out of nowhere to me and was on the radar, and I started seeing it mentioned everywhere. And it really, I'm really happy to see it was so successful. Yeah, we are too. Thanks. Cool. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let me take this prototype and go play with it. <laughs> and while we do that, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back soon with more videos from the Gamma Trade Show 2018. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.